Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello, this is Marie Manucherry, and welcome to my podcast where energy meets the divine. It is my sincere joy that you recognize, at least during our time together, how magnificent you are, how adored and cherished you are, how incredible you are, and may you open up to your intuition. May it sing in your life and always be a part of you. Uh, That's what I always hope whenever I teach or see a client or um, do anything with social media. I was recently interviewed on the Alex Ferrari show, Ferrari, excuse me, And uh, it's called the Next Level Soul Podcast. Um, You should go over there and listen to it. He's a great interviewer. He asked wonderful questions. I had a blast with him, and I hope you enjoy the conversation. So as you know, in my podcast, I answer people's questions. You can actually go to energyintuitive.com and click the podcast page and actually leave a voicemail, which I play while I'm recording. So I answer your questions here, which is really fun. It's a delightful experience for me to be able to help people I've never met who live in parts of the world. Some of them that I've never been to, although I hope to travel um, you know, all over the world. And uh, it's a joy and a delight for me. So I hope that if you happen to leave a voicemail, there's instructions on the page how to do it that whatever information I give to you will be healthy, will be extremely helpful. And just so you know, there are many people listening to the podcast who may not be comfortable in asking a question. So if you ask a question, it will hopefully be helpful for you. I always hope that. And many times I believe it is, but it will be helpful for so many other people who are uncomfortable asking the question that's on their mind, in their soul, in their being, that they would love to have an answer for. So in saying all of that, um, also be sure to visit my website, energyintuitive.com and find out about all my courses I teach regularly on my platform. I'm currently teaching a course on the Shift Network and will teach an advanced course believe in February for them on multi-sensory mediumship. Really, really fun course. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So in saying all of that, I'm going to head over to these recordings that we have, and we're going to start listening to the people who've left us beautiful messages with a question that they need an answer for. I've been a professional psychic medium healer For over 25 years, I've touched, thankfully, the lives of many thousands of people around the world. And this is one way that I give back. And I hope that you enjoy the show. Okay, here we go. First caller. Hi, Marie. This is Nancy from Wisconsin. And I wanted to know, what is the number one best thing I can do for my business right now? Thank you. Okay, Nancy from Wisconsin. I haven't been to Wisconsin, but I bet it's gorgeous right now. We're in fall here in the U.S. Really cold in Washington State, like 37 degrees this morning. But the best thing you could do, Nancy, and I have a very positive feeling about your business. So I feel like you've made some excellent decisions. You're moving in a direction that is very fulfilling for you, which is hugely important. People should not do things that don't make them happy. What I do believe that would be very helpful for you, because it looks like your logical mind has got a list, it's checking them off, I got to do this, got to do that, do that. And if these are things that you absolutely have to do and they bring you joy, then okay, great ideas. But I don't feel you holding energy that you have created the success you desire. And I always like to pump up my desire several notches above what would really make me happy. I know that sounds odd, but if you pump it up a little bit, you're probably probably going to get to where you want. So an example would be if you want to see a certain amount of clients or make a certain amount of wealth uh, annually or monthly, whatever, you know, time period you want to pick, triple it, triple the client numbers, triple the wealth number. And then your job is to feel that it's already happened. This is critical when it comes to manifesting. And you could practice on 
things that aren't as important to you. Like if you want a really delicious sandwich, I'm actually hungry right now, so I'm thinking about food. Imagine that you have it, not how it came to you, not who prepared it, none of those, that the sandwich is sitting in front of you and you're about to grab it and eat it. This is how we practice the ultimate tool of manifesting. So when it comes to your business, not how everything happened, not when it's going to happen, not where all the glory comes from, but that your desires have already been created. You have already manifested the business of your dreams. You want to be in that feeling. You want to hold it for at least a minute. You want to do that two to three times a day. You want to explore that energy because that is the true path of manifesting is to uh, feel what you want as if it's already here. I think you're going to be successful and excited for you. Congratulations on choosing something that brings you joy. That's huge and significant. Okay. I'm going to go on to the next caller. I am a woman, 46, single. My issue is I don't feel like being happy in front of my parents. I feel stuck in life due to them, not by force, but my, by my own accord. I feel free spirited within, but in front of them, I feel limited as if I owe everything to them. My liberty, my happiness, my life, everything. I want to live independent, free from this too much emotional attachment with them. Please help. This is Meena from India. Hi, Meena. And I love that name. One of my daughters is named Meena. Spells it differently than you, but I love that name. So hopefully you're not living with them, but you could be. Um, the Indian culture has multi-generational households. So if you're living with your family and you want to change family dynamics, and this is true for everyone who's listening, most people need a break from their family because those bonds are so strong and your culture is extremely strong. I mean, children are, you know, uh, taught at a very young age to be humble, to be loyal to their family, no matter what the circumstances in the situation. So I would recommend that you spend some time away from your family so you can harness that energy you've already discovered when you're around others uh, to really practice it and, and make it a strong vibration without them, uh, that would be amazing. And if you don't live this with, with them, which could be a possibility, right? When you are in the presence of them, I would love it if you have a constant internal dialogue that's going, Mina, I love you. You're an amazing person. You're an incredible person. You're a wonderful daughter. Some cultures kind of guilt and shame us into behaving a certain way. Um, my uh, children's dad is from a Middle Eastern country and uh, he had a, a difficult dad, you know, who had been kind of violent and temperamental with him when he was growing up. And he didn't even spend all of his childhood with him. So it was kind of a shock when he had to move into um, his dad's home and spend time with him after his grandmother passed. And that, you know, was kind of bred into him that no matter what, even though his father, and I know your parents are not like this, but even though his father was violent and highly disrespectful and verbally abusive, my children's father was trained to respect him no matter what, to follow all of his requests. It was just part of his culture. And there's a lot of cultures around the world who believe that whatever a man says is what needs to be followed, even if it's not healthy. So that's something we're working on globally is learning to not follow what other people say, no matter what. We're working on that and to listen to ourselves. But I think, Mina, you will resolve this because this is, you know, now that you're not a child any longer, this is really coming from your own internal perceptions that are from your child's perspective. If you can be very loving to yourself in the presence of your parents or anyone who has an adult authority with you that makes you feel less than or makes you move into some old patterns and behaviors, I think you're going to wipe it out with self-nurturing. Honey, I love you. You're amazing. I'm super proud of you. Just keep that rotating in your brain when you're in their presence. And I think you're going to balance out these old childhood beliefs that were taught to you because I mean cultures 
want us to stay in a certain way because there has been success in the way that certain cultures um, allow families to stay together from generations after generation after generation. And of course, we're not saying that you don't want to be with them um, because clearly you want to just feel different when you're in their presence, but your relationship to yourself and your perception that we want to change from childhood to adulthood will be critical and even advancing all of our cultures around the world because everyone needs to be individualized and have their own healthy autonomy with themselves regardless of their childhood experiences or their own country's unique uh, culture. Yeah, I'm excited for you because this is going to help you a lot. This is going to increase your confidence and your self-worth and allow you to have different experiences in the world. You're just breaking a very old pattern that's been passed on through generations. Just like women in general, we're learning to break very old patterns that have been part of our experience for generations. Thank you for calling. All right, I'm going to go on to the next caller. Hi, Marie, this is Angie, and I had a question about when you will be teaching your course. And I've been doing a lot of inner healing and work on myself, loving myself more, putting myself first, and tapping in more to who I am, my higher self, and raising my vibration. I want to do that more. And I want to really tap into the other side. I saw you on Alex's podcast, which I subscribe to his podcast. So I'm super excited about what you're doing and how you interact with the other side. And I'm looking forward to learning how to raise my vibration even more so that I can do that. I, my father passed away three years ago. Um, I had some time with him, but I've had two dreams about him since he passed. And I saw him at, in, he was in his eighties when he passed away. He was 84 when I saw him in my dream, he was in his 30s and he had came, come to me twice. So I just look forward to learning more about how to do this. Thank you for your time. Fun question. Uh, Sylvia Brown used to say that people who have crossed over appear often in their 30s. I have not had that experience. I mean, I do have it occasionally as a medium when I do a reading for a client or a family member or a friend, I see people at the moment that they passed. I don't hear names because for me, uh, people don't look like their names they look very different to me. Um, I'll ex explain that more in just a little bit. So, uh, so that's an actual visitation from your dad, Angie, actual visitation. When people dream and loved ones visit them in a dream, it is an actual true mediumship connection with your departed loved one. And I think your dad wanted to show you that he was 30 because he wanted to show you that he's healthy and that he's happy and he's active and he feels great. He really wanted you to know that all the way down to his toes. Uh, for those of you that are interested in any of the courses I teach, just go to energyintuitive.com. Um, I teach almost year round. I mean, I really do, but in the summer I do a retreat typically and don't teach online at that time. So to really open up to your multisensory abilities would be to even practice what I suggested, I believe to Nancy, our first caller, is to feel that it's already happened. You're doing all the right things. You're talking to yourself well, you're running your vibration, your dad's visiting you in your sleep. These are all positive aspects. But what if all of it's really happened? This is how we quickly move to the next step is we have to use our manifesting abilities along with all the things that we're doing. It's critical. It's important. Years ago when I wanted to buy a new home and it would have been the first home I bought solo, you know, as a single person. And um, I, I, I knew where I wanted to live. I, I knew what kind of yard I wanted. I, I knew a lot of things about the home. But I was really kind of uncomfortable and nervous. Did I have enough wealth? Do I need a partner? You know, all these stereotypical uh, perceptions that I had. And I had picked up a piece of granite that I loved, that I hoped would be in the kitchen of the house that I wanted. 
And I carried it around every morning and I talked to my cats. It was before I had Charles and I would tell them how beautiful the granite looked and isn't our kitchen stunning. I was in my old kitchen at the time, but I carried the granite around. I would even put my cup of tea on it. I usually have a teacup 24 seven near me or in my hand. And I would talk out loud. I was living alone at the time, but my children would have embraced that type of conversation if they were living with me then. And I talked about how gorgeous the kitchen was and how fun it was to pick out the granite and how much I loved it. It looked gorgeous and how great the cabinets looked with it. I allowed myself to be in the vibration that what I wanted had already occurred, not how it happened, not when, not where, but that it already happened. This is a critical manifesting technique. So I want you to use this with your multisensory desires that you are already having them, that they're happening when you're wide awake that it's so fun and rewarding and fulfilling, that you're feeling your energy, that you are in a powerful state of consciousness, which is something I want to talk about a little bit more, that it's so normal to feel one's energy. And it, as an intuitive, and everyone's intuitive, as a professional intuitive, psychic medium, whatever, they all mean the same thing to me. When I'm reading energy, it's critical that I'm in my body, that I'm in the lower half of my body, feeling my glute muscles, my legs, my socks. I'm wearing slippers today, so I'm feeling my slippers. Uh, it's critical that you're in the lower half of your body because it allows you to connect to the second layer of the auric field, which is the, um, it's the emotional aspect for everyone, but that's also where your intuition lies is in the emotional field of your energy system. Because even when you're reading someone else, you need to be in your own body to read super accurately. And you want to be accurate, whether you're a professional intuitive or you use intuition for your own life, because it's critical. Even professional intuitives, we work on using our intuition for our own lives. It's a little bit trickier. Typically, it's easier to read a complete stranger or someone you've never met before. Um, but reading ourselves allows us to have our, the happiness that we desire. And it also makes our skills more effective and profound. So. I would recommend that you, Angie, manifest what you're desiring. You're doing all the right things. Now you need to feel it and allow your vibration and your auric field to align you to your higher self and all of your natural psychic abilities so that you can experience them when your eyes are wide open. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Now I'll go on to another caller. Hi, Marie. My name is Belle, and I'm in Los Angeles. My question is, how can I feel confident in my decision to leave my ex? I was with him for four years and felt secure, but an unhealthy dynamic slowly creeped in. He was perfect on paper and wanted to get married, but I felt unfulfilled despite trying to convince myself otherwise. I followed my gut and left him eight months ago and immediately came career, friendship, creative success, and new love. However, why do I still feel guilty and regret for leaving my ex sometimes? It's hard for me to trust my decision and know I did the right thing for me. Thank you so much. Belle, thank you so much for calling in. I love this question. First of all, congratulations. I mean, you already have the answer. Everything happened. You fell in love again. Your career got better. You've got friendships. I mean, that's the solution. Guilt is not a real emotion. Regrets are not a real emotion. These are mind made emotions. And that's why it's critical for us to not listen to our brain unless we're looking at logical things. Guilt is not logical. Regret is not logical. I mean, ultimately, as we evolve and expand, we learn not to regret anything. And what I loved about that first relationship or the gentleman that you left, um, which was a good decision for you, is that it, it, you became convinced what you want and that you were ready to be in a relationship. Sometimes we have, you know, small uh, experiences. It could be a work experience that's temporary or in your case, like a love experience that was temporary just for us to get clarity, uh, which is incredible. You got the clarity, you left, which was actually important for your soul because that's not something that has come easy for you. You love people so deeply and you care about them so deeply. That's why you're an old soul, as are the people who listen to me and follow me and become my clients and students and all of that. So remember, guilt and regret are not real emotions. When it comes into your energy system, that means when you allow your mind to go into these places, I want you to be self-nurturing. Honey, I love you. You made an excellent decision. I'm so proud of you. You're a kind person. 
Because when we leave a relationship that's not good for us, it's actually good for the other person too. It gives them opportunities to learn things. Now they may not be conscious of that, but it's actually really true. We don't, if you stay in a relationship that's not good for you because you think you're helping another person, you're not. <laughs> and there are no soul contracts. We'll talk about that in just a, a little bit, at least not the way a lot of spiritualists want you to believe soul contracts that mm, say that, oh, you have to be with this person or they're not going to grow, or you're going to just create negative karma for you if you leave. That's not true. Souls are independent contractors and free will is the strongest law in the universe. And we're all supposed to learn how to love ourselves and to choose what's in our best interest. So congratulations. And I hope everybody was listening to these guidelines about regret and guilt are not real emotions. Don't waste your time spinning your energy in there. Be loving and kind to yourself as often as you can. You deserve that. And then you'll stop the mind from, you know, making up stories. Okay. So before I go to the next caller, let's talk about soul contracts again, just so that you have a better understanding of uh, what I'm talking about. So before we incarnate into the earth realm, we make decisions and choices about what we'd love to experience. And we don't really know how it's all going to unfold, but we've talked to God, creation, archangels. We've picked our spirit guides. We've picked the gender or even the question of gender um, that will occur at our birth. Um, we picked a family unit. Uh, we've made all these decisions and choices. And let's say your soul wanted to learn to feel naturally and authentically empowered, that that was one of your main reasons for incarnating. When we have multiple reasons, it, it can be a really, I love earth. So it's a beautiful um, place to experience. And there aren't that many physical realities in the cosmos. There's many more non-physical realities. So when we come to earth, we have these ideas of what we want to learn, but there are not contracts that are made in the heavens that say, okay, you know, you really want to learn power. So you're going to marry this person who's going to be abusive and unkind to you so you can learn self-empowerment. It's not like that. The universe actually trusts and believes in you and believes that you could just consciously at any moment, learn whatever you want to learn, that you don't have to have a contractual experience. It's not necessary. But if for some reason you don't allow yourself to expand into your consciousness and your awareness and connect to your authentic higher self while you're in physical form, then the universe will provide opportunities for you so that you could have an experience where you don't feel empowered and you learn from contraction how to be self-empowered. But it is not written in stone. You have no obligation to anyone. Just like if someone becomes, you know, uh, a criminal and they hurt someone, they don't have to be hurt themselves in previous lifetimes to grow. They could consciously wake up one day and just have an awareness from inner prayer and meditation, maybe in a prison cell, <laughs> potentially, and um, hopefully eating organic food and sleeping on a lovely mattress and feeling safe. But consciousness can happen at any moment. We don't have to have contractual experiences to actually grow. But many times we've been working on the same topic for multiple lifetimes. And one of the reasons why we choose earth is because if for some reason we don't allow our consciousness to naturally expand, we have opportunities for contrast that will allow us to gain opportunities again to be different and to embrace ourselves more authentically. And uh, yeah, so you have no obligation to anyone. You only have an obligation to yourself for your own evolutionary process. So contracts don't exist in the way that some spiritualists may think you to believe. All right, let's go on to another caller. Okay. Hello, Marie. My name is Anita and I live in Texas. And my question for you is, um, what can I do in order to tap into my um, spiritual gifts that I can use in this lifetime? Because I've always been interested in the spiritual um, realm, and I've always known that um, there's more to life than just the physical aspects that we um, get caught up in in our day-to-day -day life. So I just really would love to know if there's anything I can do to possibly um, tap into any gifts that I may have where I can maybe even use those gifts in a career as opposed to working at the normal um, corporate lifestyle. Um, and that's my question. 
Okay, well, everybody knows I love this question. <laughs> and Anita, I already feel that you're in the vibration of your abilities. Your crown chakra is right open, third eye is beautifully expanded, your second layer of your auric field, that emotional state, intuitive uh, field is vibrating beautifully. Your auric field is extended one city block in every direction in front of you, above you, below you, at all sides. It's really meant to be extended three city blocks, but one is fabulous. So here's what I would recommend that you do. Follow the things that bring you joy. One of the, mm, I'm trying to think of the right word because I don't want to use mistakes, but one of the stumbles that people tend to make is they're, they're looking for the way that would be most effective. But I think you have to look at the way that will bring you the most joy because that is where you will be the most effective. So I want you to kind of look at all of the different modalities or things that you could be doing. I don't want you to think of where that gift is, where, when it's going to come, how it's going to come. You want to get rid of those words. I want you to just look at all the things that would be really fun and delightful for you to do. And then I want you to start to feel that that has already happened because all your psychic abilities are open. You're very wise. You already used your intuition at work. We just want you to start to use it in a way that allows you to be more free flowing with your intuitive energy. I think you're a great psychic. I truly do. Um, so I hope that information is helpful. You're going to feel like it's already happening. You're providing through your personal joy. Everybody needs to make a decision out of joy, not, oh, I have to help these people. That's a low frequency. That's an anxiety frequency, especially for older souls, because older souls never want to make mistakes and they always want to do the right thing. The silly thing is that they're super compassionate and they always do to the best of their ability. <laughs> they really do. So you're already psychic. You're already massively intuitive. Follow what brings you joy so you can use those skills out in the world and make a career that's fulfilling for you. We need lots of psychics in the world and healers and mediums. Um, this is the time to allow it to happen in your life. Yeah, this is the perfect time to allow it to happen. We will celebrate that. So um, keep me posted. Okay. I'm going to go on to uh, one more. Hi. Hi. Um... My name is Laurel, and I'm going to cut to the chase on this and ask you, does it make any difference if you happen to hear, um, I guess, let's say, a disembodied voice? Does it make any difference what ear you hear it in? Okay. This happened recently with me in my right ear, and I've had episodes where I sort of have a well, I do have clear sentient, but this was this was a voice. I've had that happen before too. Um, I'm never expecting it, but this happened um, the morning of October 30th, and some stuff had occurred, or I set things in motion on. 30th and the voice actually happened the morning of the 31st so I mean I was sitting there wondering is this you know an episode of refrigerarium I think is what C.S. Lewis called it or or what I thought at first it was somebody outside my window it was not somebody outside my window I checked with my neighbors so anyway does it matter which ear you hear it out uh, into I should say Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I, really... I appreciate your help. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. First of all, the right-hand side is the receptive um, aspect, auditorily speaking. Lots of information can move into the right-hand side of, or the left. In a way, it kind of doesn't matter. Not really. But what I'm hearing, Laurel, overall is that you are a clear audience. That means you hear things. The reason why it's not happening all the time is because you need to raise your vibration and your frequency. You know, the multi-sensory world vibrates in a very high vibration and humanity can allow themselves to have a connection, a relationship, a career through connecting to the multi-sensory world, but you have to work on your vibration. You have to raise your energy high often throughout the day. Um, some of the most incredible decisions that I've made in my life is because I heard something and I'm a very strong clairvoyant. I see energy. Uh, one of them was two years before it happened. Um, I was, or in the moment when it happened, I'll, I'll speak from that perspective. I was walking through my house and I had been in a very 
stressful marriage for a very long time. It was extremely hard. And as I was walking through the living room, nobody was home. I heard, you will be divorced in two years. I'm like, <gasps> and I tried really hard not to be divorced. I came from a divorced family. I did not want to get divorced. And I, I looked up at the ceiling and I said, I will not. I was divorced two years later, happily in my life, just like um, one of our callers today, which just became incredible after that time period, just incredible. I was rewarded well for choosing not to maintain something that was um, not in my best interest. So Laurel, you have clear audience and anyone who has a clear audience gift means they have all the clairs. You already said you're clear sentient. I'm sure you're clairvoyant as well. I mean, I know you are. So work on raising your frequency and your vibration. It could have been your higher self talking to you. It could have been guardian angels, it could have been spirit guides. I always like to think everything that we're experiencing in multisensory is coming from God. And creation is always looking for how will we let it in? Because if we have resistance and we're lowering our vibration, the universe is still going, well, I've been trying to show him this through pictures, but he's not paying attention. Do you think he'll take it in if I whisper it in his ears? Oh, okay, let's try that. You know, the universe is works, we might use the word exhaustedly, <laughs> but they're actually very happy and love us and want to help humanity deeply. They work very hard, tires, tirelessly to help us get the information that we desire, especially when we're asking for multisensory gifts and abilities and knowingness. I've been asking for knowingness when I heard that language um, about you know, not being married anymore. I've been pleading with the universe for things to get better and to improve. I just didn't want to hear, or I didn't want to know that it meant that I needed to vacate the marriage, that I had exhausted all options and it was not in my best interest. So raise your frequency. That means get happy authentically. Don't fake it. Find out what makes you happy. I recommend that everybody take a weekend take two days and just go about your life and ask yourself, is this making me happy? Does this bring me joy? Does this make me happy? Because most people don't know what makes them happy, especially if in your mind over analyzing and processing, you're coming up with logical reasons why you're happy, but that's not the same thing. Real joy is an emotion. It's an experience. Just like self-love is an experience. It's a, a joyful encounter. So I hope that's helpful. And I'm going to go on to our next person. We're getting through a lot of calls today, you guys. And we had a lot of people call in, which is wonderful. I'm switching from radio to strictly podcast. And so I'm so happy people left us so many messages so that we can launch um, all of these um, beautiful questions that people are asking us and answer them through our podcast. Next one. Hi, uh, my name is Nicole. <clears throat> I'm living in London, England right now. And uh, my question is, I've, I've always, I'm, I'm in my mid fifties and I've always been, I was born uh, with vision I could see and hear and, and uh, yeah, it went on most of my life anyway. I could see all kinds of souls and spirits and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I had no control over it and, uh, and it, it, it at one point it got really bad and I, I got jumped by an entity or soul. I'm not sure what it was. And it was, it scared the crap out of me. And I managed to block after that happened. Um, and I've been trying to get it back. I've been trying to get my site back and it's been years. I've been working and taking courses and, and working with all kinds of different mediums and psychics. And I don't know what to do anymore. It's, all I want to do is help. Um, and I miss having the site and I honestly, I just don't know what to do. Um, I'm kind of giving up and I don't want to, but I can't see any way out of this. I like meditating every day and am I wasting my time? Should I just stop? Is it gone for good? Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nicole, so much for your question. Obviously, you're naturally psychic and intuitive, and you were blessed to know at a very young age that you were. You were not jumped by an entity, I promise you. You're feeling energy. Energy doesn't always feel good because humans have this weird concept about what energy is supposed to feel like. You're supposed to feel energy. It could feel like a force. It could feel like pressure. It could even be painful. 
I get very nervous when I don't feel energy in my body and I don't freak out how I feel energy. I promise you, no entity jumped you. I think you were scared. Fear, unfortunately, is what keeps humanity hostage. I'm going to use it an example without thinking about energy. Just let, let's just imagine that, you know, someone's lying in bed, maybe they live alone and they think they hear a noise and they're kind of alert. They're sitting up and their mind starts to, you know, analyze and process. And before they've even gotten out of bed to check what it was, they've already imagined that someone's broken into the house and they're downstairs and maybe they need a weapon and, uh, you know, that can feel really uncomfortable from the body. And that's what creates a lot of discomfort in human form is just overthinking and analyzing fearful stuff. So no, this is not going to go away. Do I want you to let go a little bit? Yes. And I don't mean letting go may feel, may feel like a failure, but letting go just means to surrender and get out of the way and stop trying to make something happen. You know, here's what I would do if I were you. I would go to your favorite room in the house. And yes, you need a favorite room which you need to determine from your emotions. My favorite room in my house is actually a guest bedroom, believe it or not. Uh, I, I think because the window is so close to trees, I've even been sleeping in the guest room for like a couple months now, just because I just love the vibration of that room. So figure out what your favorite room of, of the house is. And everybody needs to do this because having conversations with the universe is critical and highly important. So you're going to find this favorite place of in the house, or maybe it's your garden. I don't care where it is. And you're going to go and talk to the universe. You're going to sit down or stand. You're going to look at the heavens or whatever you want to do that makes you feel comfortable. You're going to say, Hey, listen, I know I'm highly psychic. I know I was born with these gifts. Thank you so much for allowing me to have it in my DNA and my RNA and for my cells and my body so I can, you know, accurately live it in such a profound and amazing way. And I know I got scared years ago and it somehow diminished my experience. But I want you to know, even though I'm kind of scared, I'm a little worried, I'm in a lot of anxiety about it, I really want to fully experience my multisensory ability. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. And I want you to have a very sincere, authentic conversation with the universe. And then I don't want you to think about it unless you can think about it in a happy way, in a high vibrational way. Worrying and anxiety pushes things away. Trying to make something happen is out of fear. It pushes things away. We need to appreciate where we are and what we've experienced historically to allow ourselves to manifest and create and attract what we want right now. So that's what I would recommend for you, Nicole. You're going to be successful at this and I'm excited for you. Oh, one more thing. And this is for everybody listening to as well, which I always believe my answers are. They're for everyone. When it comes to using your gifts or anything in the world, please don't approach it with helping others. I, I know that doesn't sound good and old souls want to be of help to others, but if you can do things that bring you joy, you will be of the utmost help more than you can possibly imagine. So having, the, oh, I need to help people. That's anxiety. That's fear. That's worry. That's a low vibration. Oh, I love multisensory energy very different frequency and a vibration. And then you attract more of your abilities and you actually get to help in a way that is an alignment for you, which it needs to be, it needs to be an alignment for you. Okay. Oh my goodness. On to the next caller. Hi, Marie. My name is Colleen. I live in Highlands, New Jersey. I just got done watching your podcast with Alex. It was amazing. So clearly explained, I loved it. And my question is, should I move to South Carolina? I love where I live now, but the cost of living is getting to me. Hmm. Huh. So, hmm. I think people should live what makes them happy. South Carolina is a beautiful place. I mean, Suzanne Giesman has a home there. <laughs> She's a lovely human being. Um, so, but I don't think people should move for that reason. That's a logical reason. I think we all need to work on our relationship with wealth. That's critical and highly, 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 highly important. So what I would love for you to do, Colleen, instead of packing up and moving to South Carolina, unless that makes you excited and you're so happy and you can't wait to live there, 
uh, I want you to work on how to relate with wealth. I like to use words other than money. Money actually triggers people in every culture. It lowers vibration because um, people talk about money more from fear and anxiety versus, yeah, you know, wealth is such a lovely thing. And if you don't like the word wealth, then use the word abundance or resources or finances. Find a different word. And Colleen, in your case, don't use the word money for five years. And I actually feel like you have enough wealth, by the way. <laughs> I do. So I can't see people's bank account numbers, but I can measure the volume of their wealth. And I think you have more than enough personally. But regardless, you can have more and you can change the way you relate to wealth. So wealth, you know, dollars, um, coins, investments, you know, all of the things that are a part of our financial you know, world is purely one thing, energy. And it's constantly vibrating, 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 vibrating. Now, because most people have fear regarding wealth, they tend to enter the relationship on a low frequency. If you enter the relationship on a high frequency, you're going to attract more wealth. You're going to attract more abundance. It will just effortlessly come to you. Uh, during the pandemic, my bank called me um, where my mortgage is and said, hey, We'd love to lower your mortgage rate for you. We, we don't need to come visit you. You don't have to pay a fee. We're just going to lower it for you. I'm like, great. They said, you can even call us back in a month or so. We'll be happy to lower it again for you. I'm like, great. So those things are normal to have positive interactions with institutions and um, your savings account, your wallet, all of that is normal. But first, Everybody needs to figure out what brings them joy. And this can be tricky for some people. Remember I said earlier in the podcast today that it would be lovely if you spent a weekend really getting clarity about what makes you happy. And I mean clarity about it. And it's not a thought. It's not logical. It's a feeling. It's an absolute feeling. So Colleen, I'm scanning your energy right now. And by the way, when I do readings, I'm reading everyone's energy. The fact that you guys call in and leave a voicemail is my permission. Um, are you giving me permission to actually read your energy? So I'm scanning your energy. I can see a lot of things. Like, I think you like the trickle of water. Like if it was a small waterfall or a fountain, I think that makes you happy. I also think you love emerging light. And that's actually the highest vibration that I can see right now. So light that's coming through windows, a rainbow in the sky. That's what really, really heightens your frequency and your vibration. So before you connect with wealth, whether that's you putting your password into online banking or touching your wallet, transferring funds, grabbing financial mail from the mailbox, you first need to shift your energy and think about light because that's what brings you incredible joy. You just like it. You love light. Once you get into that frequency, then you can put your password into your computer. Then you can grab your credit card out of your wallet. Then you can grab the mail. So every single time you have an encounter, and, and that could be a lot of encounters in a day, I would prefer that you wait until you're in the vibration of joy through thinking about light, and then you can proceed. This will allow you to have the resources that you desire to, to live longer on the East Coast, well, in your part of the world. Okay. And this is for everyone. I practice this all the time, constantly. Yes. It's really fun. Okay. So before I go off today, I just want to thank all of you for uh, calling um, into the podcast page and leaving your voicemail and allowing me to give you information and allow this information to teach everyone, not just the people who call them, but everyone who's listening. And one of my greatest joys is to affect humanity with a positive energy. And of course, I love the multisensory world. So I love reading your energies and having a, a sneak into your life. Thank you so much for letting me be a temporary voyeur into your life. And I've often said already that people don't look like their names. So some of you recently saw me being interviewed by Alex Ferrari. And so I'm going to tell you what I think he looks like. <laughs> and so many people seem to love him. And he really is a lovely human being, a very high vibrational, lovely human being. So Alex Ferrari doesn't look like a Alex or the car Ferrari, even though I love cars. He, unfortunately, he doesn't look like that. But what he looks like is a piece of beach. So it, it actually looks almost like an Oregon coast beach. It's just, just kind of like five feet of beach with a few little rocks and some pebbles in the sand. 
and then a lovely flow of water coming from the ocean onto this beach. But interesting enough, it's not just that. He's deep. His energy, which would be his real name, goes very deep into the sand, like so deep, I start to move into the depths of the ocean. That's exactly what Alex looks like to me. Like I could go forever. He's so deep. Um, Okay. I just thought you guys might find that fun and interesting. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Bye-bye for now.